Hi there, traders. This is Brad Goodwill with the FX Market Insight for Friday, the 18th of October. All right, now, as we come into the Asian session, it's a little bit of a different picture here today. The, um, obviously, the big news over, uh, over the previous day was, was good old Boris coming to um, pretty much, he's agreed to a deal with the um, EU. He just needs to get it through UK Parliament. Now, obviously, this is where the, the bickering from politicians will come into play. But this is a hugely positive factor. Sterling rallied up to 130. Uh, the figure, it's, uh, this could be like a great answer for the markets. Maybe a great answer. I, I don't know what the real deals are, but um, all the details of the deal. But I think as, as a trader, I'm looking for clear markets. And this is going to give us that pretty quickly. Now, what we have, a bit of major focus, obviously the US-China trade talks. But uh, the Chinese, we've got a huge amount of Chinese data coming out today, starting with the GDP. And this is where, you know, if you want a snapshot of what was happening in China, well, go no further than today's releases. Okay, these are all coming out at once. So fill your boots. Now, obviously, the main pairs associated with this Chinese data, it's all a bit about global growth. So you'll see the equity markets move, but Aussie, Kiwi and the Wan are the main direct impacts. Um, if we get really, if we get positive data here, then what's going to happen is I'll just scroll up here to the overall analysis. What we're going to see is a decent move uh, across the board. Now we are seeing the dollar index ship lower across all sort of time zones or time frames. That's a lot to do, obviously, with sterling's massive move to the top side, and that's taking euro with it. Uh, we had some positive employment numbers out of Australia yesterday, so they're starting to go, but it's got a bit more work to do before it breaks daily and weekly levels. Uh, and the Kiwi also running with it as well. And notably, dollar CAD and dollar Swiss moving down with that dollar move. The odd one out, well, it's dollar yen, and this is because of the whole safe haven trade. It's probably being unwound at this point, uh, and that is causing dollar yen. On the alleys, it's sort of drifting sideways, but it's still above recent highs and um, or recent resistance levels and also the the daily trend also above resistance so it looks pretty good right this is a this is the first time in quite a while that i can recall where we, we're starting to get the dollar pairs and the other pairs matching up and it's starting to get into a bit more of a clearer direction but just before we we go and crack the champagne and sort of start toasting to our future profits it's these events which are unwinding that are giving us this, they could change at any stage, right? Boris has got this elect, there's election going, or a vote, I should say, this weekend in the UK about Brexit. If they pass that, well, then the positive euphoria, sterling will continue to rally. Very wild volatility, though. Obviously, no positions over the weekend. The Trump impeachment stuff's taking a bit of a back seat, but that's still booming along. And the China-US trade issue, well, they're, they're, the as I read yesterday, the... Chinese officials are trying to put the text together for stage one, right, of their, of their which is no more, tar no more increases and things like that. So these things are still playing out. But right now, Brexit has given us, uh, especially a bit of weak US dollar sentiment already in the market, um, has given us a bit of a look here. So we are starting to get into some really much better trading conditions. Uh, and you know what? Well, if the Chinese data, as I said, comes out, strong well then we, we get a nice move with the current moves that's got to be a bit of a chance to tuck some cash into the account before the weekend now there's not much else out besides that so let's just have a look at the uh, major pairs and see what uh, is going on uh, as you can see here aussie broken higher above 67.90 it didn't really want to go you know even with the stronger employment numbers yesterday but the brexit sterling move uh, and the, the consequent drift off in the dollar has given it uh, enough strength to get going. Same for uh, Kiwi. Here's uh, dollar yen. You wouldn't even know anything was happening. Uh, Euro heading to the top side. If, if Euro breaks above like this, this, this level up here, it's open skies to like 113, which is, you know, you wouldn't even think of this two weeks ago when it was under 109. Uh, and here's uh, Sterling charging to the top side. I mean, wild volatility. Don't think for a second this is going to be an easy trade. It's not. Um, and dollar CAD starting to move into a nice downward picture. And you can see already the um, uh, resistance line there forming quite nicely. 
uh, gives us a level to work off on the top side back towards 131.90. But this thing, you know what? Under 131.30, there's, uh, I think next stop is 130.40. This, like, where you have potential for some seriously big moves. The dollar, the US dollar has been dominating proceedings for some time. And what we may see now is what I'm looking for is these weekly trends. We get a shift in those towards, um, you know, dollar down across the board. Uh, it'll push all the other pairs up and we will see all the markets correct across the board. It, it could potentially see a big unwind of Kiwi shorts. You know, they're talking about lower rates, et cetera, et cetera. Probably same for the Aussie. So we could see a real big move here in the Aussie and Kiwi, correct those recent moves and sort of catch up to what's been happening on sterling. All in all, it's, to me, it's pretty positive. Okay, take it with a grain of salt that the moves do come from the geopolitics. But you know what? This is starting to look like we're getting closer to normal markets. You take out Brexit right, out of the equation here, all sterling and all the sterling crosses are much more intelligent trades. And then it's just down to Trump and probably the China-US situation. Hopefully that gets resolved. And hallelujah, we're out in the open and we're trading for, uh, with a different perspective. All right, guys, pretty positive stuff. Keep an eye on that Chinese uh, data if you get a chance. Outside of that, uh, it's the geopolitical events which will dominate. As I said, the Brexit situation could change very quickly. So as much as these, the analysis falls into line here, it could be all hobbity gobbity tomorrow if everything spins around. Fingers crossed it doesn't. All right, guys, have a great trade day. Cheerio.